When people talk about sustainability, it's very common to hear the three pillars, that is economic, social, and environmental. And again, this gets back to our earlier conversation about trade-offs, is that people say, well, uh, maybe we have to trade off some environmental value because we need to develop economically. Or maybe we need to um, not develop economically here because it's too damaging to biodiversity or environment, so you have to trade them off. What we did when we looked at the planetary boundaries in particular, but it may also work at other scales, is that they are not three equal pillars that you trade off. It's in fact what we call a nested hierarchy. So think of three circles, one inside the other one. The big circle on the outside is the environment. And if you don't think that's important, think of how you're going to try to live if the environment really goes bad, if we lose oxygen in the atmosphere, if we have a, a climate that, that isn't stable, uh, if we can't derive ecosystem services because we've lost too much biodiversity. So I like to tell people, don't use the word environment, use the word life support system, because that's what it is. And we are dependent on it for our very existence. So. Uh, that's the overarching one, the all-encompassing one, because we have to have uh, a, an environment in which we can live and in which we can thrive. And that's not always given these days. So within that, then, we have to have a very good social system. We're a social animal. We, um, that's part of why we've evolved, why we've become so powerful, why we've developed all the things we have, the civilization and technologies, because we actually work with each other. We don't fight all the time. Well, sometimes it seems in politics we do fight too much. But anyway, we are social creatures. So you need a well-functioning social system. You need good institutions. You need good education. You need good health. All the things that, that we do collectively so well together. It's only when you have an environment you can live in and when you have a social system that's really resilient and robust, then you can have a really good economy. If you don't have either of those other two, you can't have a good economy. So, so really, the, one's dependent on the other and dependent on the other, not three pillars that interact. So that's the way we sort of reconfigure, reconceptualize what sustainability is all about. I think we need to change our value systems. Uh, and there have been many cases in the past where societies have failed and have collapsed because their value systems were not appropriate for changing circumstances. Now, if you assume that no matter what happens, you always have a good environment, and no matter what happens, you always have a robust society, then you can say, yes, it's the economy, stupid. Uh, but I would say the people who make those assumptions are stupid, uh, because that hasn't been the case in the past, and it certainly looks like it's not the case today. We need to have a discussion about what really matters. And I think that this is actually growing in wealthy countries. I think a lot of people are realizing that it isn't the economy, stupid, uh, because their well-being, their happiness, is no longer dependent on continued economic growth. It's dependent on other things, and on relationships. It's dependent on other things they do in life. I think we need to think about changing the way we look at landscapes, whole regions, and the earth as just a set of resources that we extract. Because that's the way an economic system would look at it, a bunch of resources. We need to think of it as a, as a living biosphere, as a complex system that provides so much for us, all the way from basic food, water, air we can breathe, to all the wonderful things we enjoy in terms of recreation and inspiration. And that's really been well documented now um, by the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment as a whole suite of ecosystem su uh, services. But to, ki to continue the flow of that, we need to actually be stewards of the system that provides it. By stewards, we need to look after it to make sure it's, it's, it's resilient, it's functioning well, and so on. And that's far more complex than simply extracting a resource from it. Well, I think it's starting to happen. I think people traditionally have done that. When you look at a lot of traditional societies who have lived in landscapes, they rapidly learned that they needed to be stewards. It happened in my country when um, Australian Aborigines, when the first Australians came from Africa maybe 60,000 years ago. They had to adjust. They had to learn. But they learned if they, if they were going to survive in such a harsh environment as Australia, they had to be stewards. Of, they had to look after the other creatures. In other words, if they're going to raid uh, the, the nests of birds or crocodiles or whatever laid eggs, they couldn't take them all, even though it was easy and it was a cheap resource. Okay? They needed to make sure that there were things left in the system, make sure the system operated. That's being a steward rather than just plucking the resource out. Yes, I do, and I think it's a very good point. I think we've lost a lot of the connection to the biosphere. In fact, one of the nice things about taking this landscape approach that we've been talking about, it's a way to reconnect people to the biosphere, which we have to do.